And then because it has both an inlet and an outlet for your air to go and your liquid to come in, you can just put your bottle in here and just bleh, just squeeze like you never have squeezed before. That's a weird thing to say. Three different charging ports on the device we're going to be talking about today. What's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Going to be talking about the Pug, the Vaporgate, freaking pug. I just got this one in the mail, but I've been using a pug for the last few months. Ah, months. Months might be an exaggeration. Weeks, certainly. Last few weeks, ah, maybe like a month, maybe like a month and a half, honestly. It's just a pretty rad little 80 watt banger. It's got a 2,800 milliamp hour battery on the inside. It's an internal battery, meaning you have to charge it via USB, but it's not just micro USB. Like you saw, there's a lightning port on here. So if you have an iPhone, you can just plug your iPhone charger in here, that lightning connection, as well as a USB-C, which that USB-C just makes me the most happy, the most happy. I went ahead and opened up the black Vaporgate pug. It comes in black and white, and this kit happens to come with two of those disposable Lucy tanks that I opened up in the vlog not too long ago. Now, the original pug kit that I got from Vaporgate weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks ago was just the pug. It's become a kit and they're packing it in with two of those disposable Lucy tanks. We all have a little bit of mixed feelings, I think, on disposable things. Things like disposable tanks, disposable pods. We're not, we're generally not, you know, hu huge fans of that. Regardless of how you feel about that, about the waste of the plastic and things like this, those Lucy tanks are pretty, pretty dope little disposable tanks. So I'm just gonna pop this pug out and you can see it's just a little guy. It's just a little fit in your hand kind of guy. 2,800 milliamp hour battery. It's got a real, real clicky fire button on there. And then right here, I believe, is where you're gonna see all of the different charging ports. Like this one, the middle one always comes with a little, uh, with a little rubber thing in it, but you have, let's see if I can identify these. Yeah, that's USB-C, that's lightning, that's micro USB, I think. Did I get that, did I get that right? And what I was going to put on here was just a little RDA. I love having this like little pocketable guy that you can just put a little RDA on and have like a little tiny cloud chasey pocketable hand, you know, set up with you. Now this is the Recoil Rebel RDA and it's 25 millimeters and whew, there's a, there's just, there's just the slightest little bit of overhang. It might not even show up on video. You may actually not even be able to see that, but there is, it's just a little bit. It's just like one, it's literally like one millimeter of hangover on there. I think the pug is designed for 24 millimeter and down sized, you know, diameter toppers. But I got a Recoil Rebel on here right now. It's a 0.11. I'm gonna max this out at 80 watts and see what kind of power it can give me. Dang! So with that 80 watt ceiling on this device, you can still run something pretty low. Maybe not like, don't go as low as like a 0.11 just cause you're not gonna get necessarily the power that you need out of the device. Now real quick, this is just a little Lucy disposable sub-ohm tank. It unscrews with the top right here. There's a little bit of texture along the top. You can unscrew this. You can see two large kidney-shaped juice fill holes right there, or liquid fill holes right there. Damn, you're definitely not gonna be able to see down into this disposable sub ohm tank, but it's just a single. There's a single strip of mesh down in there. Now, I, 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 in a normal sub ohm tank, I would take this apart, I would pull a coil head out and I would saturate it, but as it stands, this coil head doesn't come out of here because it's a disposable tank. You're just meant to throw it away when you're done with it. So. All I ever do on a disposable tank is I just put, you know, I just put whatever, a little couple couple droplets of liquid kind of right down the center. Kind of go around the edge and squeeze a little bit just to get some liquid flowing down into that cotton. Are you flowing down into there? Are you flowing into that cotton liquid? Yeah. 
Uh, it looks good. It lo I just put a little bit of liquid in there. It looks good. It looks like it's getting nice and saturated. And then because it has both an inlet and an outlet for your air to go and your liquid to come in, you can just put your bottle in here and just bleh, just squeeze like you never have squeezed before. That's a weird thing to say. Throw that drip tip slash top cap back on there. There's no adjustable AFC. There's, there's, there's just no nothing. Once you fill this up, that's it, you're good to go. Airflow on the Lucy tank honestly feels nice. Feels a little bit, uh, feels a little nice and restricted. I also do want to point out that the pug adjusts in one watt increments. And that is, man, that, that's just, that's just my favorite thing of all time. One watt increments, perfect. Give it to me, especially with the sub-ohm tank. All right, so this is a 0.15 Lucy disposable sub-ohm tank on top of the pug. We got the pug set to 60 watts. I can't ever get over like just how small and slick this little thing is. I'm always a little bit conflicted as well with internal battery mods. I used to really love old internal battery mods like the old Inokin MVPs, MVP version two, MVP version three. I just, I liked being able to charge it with a micro USB and not having to like pull in and out 18650s and put those on like a separate charger. For traveling especially, it's something I really like. I like having internal battery mods because I travel with lots of USB cables, but I don't necessarily always want to travel with like a big honking 18650 charger. So in those types of situations, things like the pug or things like that, what did we just do? Vupu, Vupu Find S kit that had an internal battery as well. All right, enough yammering, let's vape this Lucy tank. Awesome, wow, great. That's a shockingly good vape. Nice, real nice. Uh, I found that this Lucy disposable tank can't really hold up to a lot of wattage. The resistance on this one is a 0.15 and I'm keeping it right around 50 watts at that wattage. Seems to have a real nice flavor. It's a little bit warm and the wicking is able to keep up and you don't run into any sort of dry hit situations. Now, if we're going to talk about vape budget hands here with this little pug, over on the Vaporgate website, they have the pug for sale as just this. Like I said, just, just the pug. And the pug runs about $80. So yeah, vape budget hands. But they also have a kit on their site that is the pug XS. Yeah, they, they did it. XS. XS R Max Plus. Pro Series. But the Pug XS kit on the Vaporgate site comes with two of the Lucy disposable sub-ohm tanks and the Pug for the same price as the Pug alone. Kind of weird. I don't know if they meant to do it that way. I feel like if you're going to get this, then yeah, you'd get the kit with the disposable tank so you could just vape it right away. They do sell five packs of the Lucy disposable tanks as well for about 25 bucks, which, ah, you know, vape budget hands, right? This is gonna be a thing if you're a, a regular sub-ohm tank user, you're gonna have to do a little bit of math and establish like the costs of replacement coil heads. Let's say you're like a baby beast person and your baby beast coil heads cost this much and you go through this much in a, in a, in a week or in a month, you're gonna have to figure out what the cost of that translates to into disposable tanks. Me personally, in a pinch, disposable tank is gonna be fine. It'll vape and it'll vape great. And these Lucy tanks, they vape pretty great. If you want something with like a little bit more longevity, a little bit more sustainability, I guess, an actual sub-ohm tank with replaceable coil heads so you're not throwing away the whole tank might be a better way to go. Or even if you're really worried about waste, RTAs. RTAs have very little waste. Dang, it's just vaping so well. This this Lucy tank is legitimately vaping awesome right now. Let's play the aliens game or the FDA game where they have come and taken every vape product I have in my office and I got nothing left to vape. Is the Pug kit, maybe even the Pug XS, something I would seek out and buy right away? Here's the thing, I probably wouldn't, but I have a very, very special place in my heart for small internal battery 80 watt little banger mods. I've been like this my whole life. If you go out through through any of my videos throughout all of 2015, all of 2016, I say the same thing. I just enjoy little 80 watt, 
50 watt, 60 watt, little tiny pocketable little bangers like this, because I can throw an RDA on there and have a rad vape, or I can throw a sub ohm tank on there and have a really rad vape, or I can throw like a K fun on there, or a mouth to lung RTA and get much longer battery life at a much lower wattage. I think these are just really useful to have around. I love having little little 80 watt bangers like this in my collection. And while I'm not necessarily like in love with the idea of disposable tanks or the Lucy, it works really well and you can get a kit that comes with this and the pug and I think that's pretty rad. Not to mention micro USB, lightning port, and USB-C. Look, I can grab this USB-C right here. Oh, it's off camera. You won't be able to see it, but you have to, uh, you'll have to trust me that I'm plugging it in. Boop, yeah, it's plugged in, and you're just gonna have to take my word for it. So yeah, there you go. At the end of the day, the decision is yours to make, but the Pug is a very solid, really nice, kind of techy, cool, high-end feeling little 80-watt uh, banger device that will charge with any cable you can throw at it. Lastly, if I have one gripe with the Pug, which I do, it's one gripe I've had since the beginning of the Pug, the buttons get a little bit rattly. You might not be able to hear that, but if you shake it, if you're fiddling around with it, if you're moving it around, kind of hear a little bit of rattle on those buttons. I wish those buttons were a little bit more uh, secure in there, didn't rattle around so much. It's, it's not It's not a deal breaker, it's just something, you know, it's just something to be aware of. Anyway, that is far too much rambling from me, you guys. Links are not allowed in the description anymore. Thank you so much, YouTube. So you're gonna have to use your Google Foo, but thank you guys so much for watching. And no matter what's in your hand, well, go ahead and hit that like button and, and subscribe. I don't know, I'm not, I don't ever say that as a YouTuber. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't, I mean, you don't have to subscribe. I'm not the boss of you. But no matter what's in your hand, as always, friends, yeah, let's keep on vaping.